Ali from Tel Aviv, Israel, now fighting out of Pretoria, South Africa. His weight already 194 and one half pounds. His record stands at 18 wins, three losses and two draws with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the IBF number 13 cruiserweight world contender. Please welcome the former IBO and WBU cruiserweight champion. Please welcome the challenger, Sebastian Rothman. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with gold trim. He hails from Montego Bay, Jamaica. He weighed in at the cruiserweight limit of 200 pounds even. His record, 24 wins, one defeat, one draw, with 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Please welcome the IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, introducing O'Neal Supernova. in charge, Tommy Kimmons, now to give instructions. 12 rounds of World Championship Boxing schedule. Gentlemen, this is a 12-round fight for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World, and I gave you the instructions. I want to remind you, this order is to watch you fight, so keep it clean. Touch them up. So we are set to go, and uh, we also, of course, want to welcome all of you uh, watching live tonight in South Africa on MNET. You got to get up early or stay up late. Oh, yeah, the, uh, they love boxing in South Africa, too. It is the number two sport right behind soccer. They love the sport of, of boxing. They follow it. They read the magazine, so we're happy to have them tuning in on MNET. Great sports country, as a matter of fact. Tommy Kimmons will be the referee, and we are underway. And Rothman is going to have to outbox Bell, and he's going to have to keep him off of him. Start to the good left jab. Um, this fight right here is just, I, I think it's just an outstanding fight. You know, this is everything that's good about boxing. These two well-fit athletes who get in there, they come in with you, hear, you heard them in the back. They both know exactly, specifically what they want to do. And both of them trying to win this championship as both of them are challengers. Now we know Bell on your right is the champion. And he's trying to set the pace in this first round with that jab. Good shot yeah. by Bell to start things here. And uh, that'll get Rothman's attention. Now the one thing that must be said too, Sean, is that Bell has the experience that she's been in there against better guys than Rothman has. And, and the other thing that needs to be pointed out, Rothman owned the IBO cruiserweight title for a short time, lost the title to Carl Thompson back in February of last year. And then he, you know, the old thing, you fall off the horse, you get back up on the horse. Well, they put him back up on Man of War. He lost to Steve Cunningham after that in a majority decision. So he's lost two in his last three. Two and two in his last four, and they, he, has, he has all kinds of guts. Sebastian Rothman could be called Sebastian Gutman. He is a tough fella. And he is so focused for this fight. He has never fought here in the United States, fought all his fights, uh, either in South Africa or in Europe. And again, a testament to what I just said. He's normally sleeping at this hour. You know, or he's in the middle of the afternoon at this hour. Here he is fighting. He was performing on the other, other opposite side of the world for, for him. Now, that is no small commute from Pretoria, South Africa. To you. Well, I'm far on the other side of the world, and it's, it's hard. It, it drains you. You're tired. Nice oh, good, right. Sebastian. Kind of a confidence building around here for after taking a shot early from uh, on the O'Hall. Rockman fighting much better. A lot of pushing in this opening round. Trying to feel out your opponent. 
good combination from Rothman. Rothman fighting a uh, pretty good first round. Bell says, come on, come to me. That's what Bell wants. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you can lay up against those ropes, and it's a, it's a relaxing way to fight. Very close first round here. Sebastian Rothman, what, what do you think, David, too? That, that, was a, that was a very close round. Sean, you know, you talked earlier about the importance of having a fight plan. Now, as you can see in the first round, you know, both fighters have gone out there and established their jabs, established their movements, making angles. And in regards to that, you know, I totally agree with you in regards to, to, to having a fight plan. If plan A don't work, it's obvious you need to have plan B. Do you think it's time to switch this to plan B? I believe so. What do you reckon? Harold Volberg. South African's best trainers. He's been around the game a while. What round is it, uh, Barry? Coming to round two. Hey, there you go. Touch gloves and go to work. Good jab, good stiff jab. You know, my trainer always told me set the jab. Everything else will work if you if you just can set the jab. Right in every fight, start that jab off. Nice work from Rothman. The jab the counter from Bell. And you would always say to your trainer, Dad. Yes, exactly. I did. I sure did. My father was my trainer. Dad, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. How do you fire your trainer? I never could. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Dad. You're fired. Still struggling in there a bit. Looking for the, for the opening. Tommy Kibben's the third man in the ring. They're telling Bell to throw to the center. What they mean is they come up, come up to the uppercut right between the gloves. Nobody really got the better of that. I would think that's more the fight that Bell wants than the fight that Rothman wants, but Rothman's going to take what's there. This is the fight that Rothman wants right here in the center of the ring in long range. And a good jab. Good jab. Good jab. Jab's the most important weapon in boxing, both offense and defense. Well, so far, uh, Rothman, for the most part, is doing exactly what he told he was going to do. Keep him off him with the jab. And I'll tell you, O'Neal keeps his chin up in the air a little too high. See how he's got it up there, kind of cocks his head. I'd like to see him tuck that chin. You got to get all the production you can. See his chin kind of exposed there. He does try to use that shoulder as protection. Good body shot. Yeah, we heard that. To the body and to the head, they're telling Bell. Double right hand from Rothman. Four straight punches got there from Rothman. Rothman's not a guy who's going to get you out of there with one punch. No, he keeps a lot of them coming. Nice left hand. The right hand missed, but the left hand got there. And Rothman may be fighting Bell's fight, but he's fighting better than Bell right now. And he's punching. Bell's kind of getting out of the way. There's a good left hook from Rothman. Sebastian landing with that. Bell trying to lean on the ropes. Rothman clearly getting the better of it here. And Bell finally extricates himself. Nice work from Sebastian Bell at the end of the round once again. You know, good combination. He got O'Neal in the corner. Rothman cool. kept him in the corner until the bell rang. Good round, I thought, for Sebastian Rothman. Give me the next one. You know what? And those were set up by the left jab. David Tua, uh, help me, help me talk about the importance of that jab. Here's the jab setting up the attack that Rothman was going to use. Sean, you know, I was the same situation, you know, as you were. You know, your father was a trainer. My father was a trainer. 
And he was a great believer in having a good jab. And you can see the jab just opens up everything. Straight right hand. And that's why Rothman was able to score well at the end of that round. The jab kind of tempos your, your opponent. You set the pace with that jab. You control the, the fight with that jab. It pretty much kept, the, kept, kept his distance where he was able to get off. A little bit of uh, swelling under the left eye of Sebastian Rothman. It's not an issue right now. This is round three. 12 rounds for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the world. The Cruiserweight division, less than 200 pounds, been around since 1979. And it used to be a transition, really a kind of a transition division. People would go from light heavyweight to, to heavyweight. So they put in this cruiserweight division where now all of a sudden the light heavyweights would develop into, into fighters and the, the heavyweights would stay in their class. And, and of course, the interesting thing to me, guys, is that uh, Rocky Marciano would have been cruiserweight. Yes. And he beat, you know, heavyweights. They were, they were big. I mean, they were big heavyweights. The Rock. A pretty good career. For more jabs from O'Neill. Good right cross. What a throwing with intention. O'Neill just seems to be pawing right now with his punches, just trying to pick Rothman's jab. Now putting a little pressure is O'Neill. Rothman, pretty good defender, covers up pretty well. Those punches mostly landed on the elbows and. Uh, Tommy Kibben's obviously thinking one of them landed low. Yeah, I mean, real respectful is uh, O'Neal. I'll tell you, both nice guys. Outside the ropes are both, both quality guys. Good jab from Sebastian. O'Neal Bell is going to start to realize uh, he's got a problem here getting inside the jab of Rothman. And when he has, Rothman's gotten the better of him. But O'Neill does know that it's still early in this fight. Right. And we still got a long way to go. Right? How about that? Seven or eight jabs in a row. And no retaliation from Bell. Oh, there it is. Good combination from Bell. I like Bell doing that. Start off at the body and then work your way to the head. There's a good cross from Sebastian. Swelling under the right eye of uh, Sebastian Rothman also. So swelling under both eyes. And still, of course, a long way to go. Good jab. Good jab. You know, these two, they do know the importance of the jab. Both of them. That's a good cross. Pick the arms of Rothman. And there's Rothman coming back. Both of them trying to, still trying to set the tempo in the fight. I thought another good round for Sebastian Rothman. Well, he is setting it. And you know what? He's still early, still developing yet. Yeah, they're still trying to change the strategy for O'Neill. That's James Plenty. He's uh, got plenty of instructions in this one. David, to him, what would you tell him if you're in the corner? Uh, uh, How uh, about Bella Rothman? I want to be his daughter for the right. All right, give me Vaseline. You know, just an observation here, David, but a little bit of swelling under both eyes, and far be it for me to question, but why would they not get in swell on that? Way? Beats me. Thank you. I think they <laughs> should have it. They beats him. <laughs> uh, the, uh, what the old time trainers used to do is they put the, the silver dollars in the buckets and they'd hold the silver dollars that would get cold. They'd hold the silver onto a, a swelling or a mark, discoloration. And one of the new inventions they, they have is the inswell, which is same theory, just with a piece of metal. Now they're heating it up. And, and Rothman slipped the left hand in, which was the best punch of that exchange. And there's an uppercut by Rothman, oh. the left hand behind it. 
Great weapon. Did Bell wobble from that? You know, the, one of the things, Walton is not a flashy fighter, but you know one thing I really do like about him? He always seems to be on balance when he throws a punch. You know, he's been taught the basics well. Look at his hands. Are, they're pretty, pretty high. When he gets in close, he brings them up. He throws good punches. He has good balance in there. Like an overall fighter. He kind of steps around. Look at this work from him. He does a, a, a little pivot around there. There's Bell with a couple of body shots. And there's a couple of bumper cuts that did slip in. They weren't damaging. Rothman kind of comes right back with a right hand of his own. Rothman is just taking this fight oh, to Bell. Rothman's hurt. No, I think he's got to be faking it. That's too good. <laughs> <laughs> An Academy Award performance. I'd like to thank my agent and the Academy. <laughs> Body shots. Bell. There's an uppercut from Rock. I don't like it when Bell leans back from the waist up. I think he's very vulnerable. Bell a little bit busier in this round, but Rockman's still taking a fight away from him. I, and that would be the advice in the corner between rounds. You know, you're, you're getting out hustled in there. It, it, your opponent's taking the play away from you. He's hitting you three to your other two. Rockman is really sharpshooting Bell here. Very high connect percentage. There's another uppercut, a left hand behind it. And a right hand slips in. And Bell's shots are being all caught in the gloves of Rothman. This is a kid in Sebastian who is trying. Bell trying to turn Rothman that time. Did get a couple of shots in, but it's still Rothman. A nice left hand from Rothman. Bell fought his way out of the corner. And turned around Rothman. Now Rothman with his back against the ropes. Keep him up. Rothman did exactly the right thing there. Just got his way out of there. Rothman, pretty good defensive fighter. Good right hand, and Bell is down. And the timekeeper, the timekeeper did not start counting. Although it's a moot point because the bell landed. I'm telling you, the little wobble round that we were joking that it was not a that he was hurt i think he was actually hurt and he played it off like he wasn't i think he's hurt i i think you're right and here he is hurt again here it is this is now this is the one where he's really wobbled this is at the end of the round right there you know it, it wasn't that big of a punch it wasn't that flashy it didn't look like it hurt him that badly but it did look at this crack overhand right just on the temple and he never really well is. he did go down yes yep. he went down Wow. I'd say Rothman is fighting a really well thought out fight so far, I think, David. Do you agree? He's fighting a fantastic fight, and everything is possible, obviously, because he's got that good jab. Well, Bell is going to have to find another gear here. I don't think there's any question about it. I think he's, for the large part, been going through the motions here. Maybe his idea was to take Rothman into the deep water, but. I've got him, I've got Rothman winning every round in the last one because of the knockdown at 10-8 round. I agree with you. You know, this is a kid in Rothman who, you know, he doesn't possess all the great skills of a, of a fighter, but he's got a lot of heart. He's in there trying. But you know, like we said, I think the thing about him, he doesn't get hit a lot, he picks a lot of punches, he keeps his elbows in, mm -hmm. keeps his chin down, and he's on balance when he throws his shots. He's not a powerful puncher. But fundamentally, I think he's pretty sound. Basics. Well, you know what? Tell that to Neil Bell, who, who went down the last round. It's basics, too. The difference between the great fighters and the, and the good, the really good fighters, the great fighters do the basics, the basics perfectly. I mean, look at Ray Robinson. Oh, he, he was beautiful to watch. Even Ray Little, look at he did the basics, basics perfectly. See, now there's four punches thrown by Bell, and none of them scored. out and punch. Bell does that to the body. Oh, no. Only to the body. It was to the lower body. <laughs> mm. 
Second warning from Tommy Kimmins. And if he has to warn him again, he's taking a point. Last one on the house. You got to keep your punches up. And, and honestly, I don't think O'Neill Bell can afford to lose a point here. Right hand slipped in from Bell. On to the right hand from uh, O'Neill. It's hard to break through that defense of Rothman. And the jab is very effective. It just is, I think it just has Bell kind of mesmerized. There's an uppercut, not a big punch, but it got there. Bell just got in great shape, and look at him. He's, he's, just, he's just throwing a lot of punches. He's busy. He's, he's, he's showing that he wants to win this championship. But still, look good for the judges. A lot of noise. It scored. And again, Rothman is just outworking. Ben. Right. That's that's the bottom line. Just work out for it. Double Good. uppercut. Then he covers up. You know, if the name of this game is hit and don't be hit, I think that's exactly what Sebastian Rothman is doing in this fight. Fight plan. He knew what he wanted to do in this fight. He's executing it perfectly. Sebastian Rothman putting O'Neal Bell into a good corner. Schooler. Oh, yeah. Come in back. Come in back now, O'Neal. Come in back. Take him and go. Get out there. Take him back. Real hard for the box. I'm going to treat a box and give And of course, O'Neal Bell now cannot afford another low blow. He's been warned twice about it already. And if Tommy Kivens were to take a point away from him, that would really cost him. Oh, yeah. You don't want to lose a point over, like, Low blow like this, David Tua. How do you concentrate to remember not to hit the guy low, even though you're trying to hit his body? Sometimes when you're really tired and you clinch, you can't help yourself. You know, Hans Galata. Yeah, your, your hand, those gloves get heavy too, right? Most definitely. So I, I think, David, that, that Rothman has Bell just kind of confused. He just doesn't know what's coming next nor where it's coming from. Have you been in a situation like that? He's not a fancy fighter, but he does everything. Great in regards to sticking to the basic and everything is going well for him. Great point. Not a fancy fighter, but he does everything well. You know what's really going to cause him some problems, though, is you saw the, the swelled up eyes and the, the black eyes underneath both for Rothman. But look at how he covers up here. Now, right here, have any of those punches landed from Bell? Well, somebody's hitting him because he's got the black eyes. He's got the swelling around his face. So somebody's hitting him. But yes. I don't think it's a real bell. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's hitting himself. <laughs> Look at this. He's wake himself up. <laughs> Rothman, the crowd senses something. Just take a, just watch Rothman defensively. Look right here. Example. That was caught on the elbow. And that one slipped in. Miss, miss, block, block. No, you're right. He's, he's protecting. It's just, it's just stealing. Low again. Oh, yeah, they gotta be careful. You know, the referee's talking to him too. Keep him up. Keep him up. You know, he's reminding him. Uppercut from Rothman. Uppercut again from Rothman. Inside. Great weapon. That's such a hard weapon to defend against. And there it is again. Yep. And O'Neill got him off the left hand. Oh, two banged heads. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece came, came out. That's nice. Gonna let him wash it off. I have seen those Tommy Kimmins an outstanding referee. I have seen those referees who just pick it up off the canvas and put it back in the mouth. Yeah. That's not good. You know, <laughs> we mentioned earlier, though, look, O'Neill Bell looks to me like he's just going through the motions. And yeah. I know that happens to fighters every now and then where you just don't have it. You know, like, that's what it looks like to me. Sure. You know what? And some nights that is where you just flat. You just feel flat out there. Maybe perhaps a little de dehydration, perhaps a little bit. And th there is such a thing as overtraining. Now, I scoff at that because a lot of these circuit fighters say when they get knocked out in the third round, oh, I was overtrained. Yeah. <laughs> but 
there is there is a, a theory that that is a possibility. Now the eyes uh, are an issue as Bell opens up a little bit here. There's a good right hand by Bell. That might have been his best shot of the fight. And another right hand behind the head of Rockman. Bell may be having his best round here. That was low again. And, but Tommy Kibbins didn't see it. And now Rockman with the right hand drives Bell into the ropes. What a fight. Neither one to give. Bell got away with a low blow there that would have cost him a point. But I thought he had his best round of the fight. Well, he is hoping to turn the tide on this fight. David Tua, how, do you think that the, the, the tide is shifting? Will he be able to keep it? Yeah, obviously he's doing the best he can. You know, it seems to me I that it's an off night for I him. Know, you know, things are not going well. And as you know, as a fighter yourself uh, in the past, some nights you just don't feel the best. But somehow you hang in there and you try to do the best you can regardless of how you feel. Is there anything you can do if you are having an off night? Is shake out or what? Yeah. You can do whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. If it means it getting up and then moving around, if it means moving the head a little bit more, whatever works. There's a look at the face. You know, we talked the last round, Barry, about the swelling around the eyes. They didn't touch it. Or they didn't touch it. Maybe that got no coins. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's lost. <laughs> it's from South Africa. You got to bring rands. <laughs> you know, you, you take the ice and put it up there. Ice pack. Right hand from Bell to start this round. Rothman is starting to get busted up, and there's still a long way to go in this fight. And Bell knows it. Bell may have been just playing possum, allowing for Rothman to tire himself out. Something tells me Rothman is in good shape. Yeah, though. I don't think he's tired. No. But, but I, the eye could be a fact of both eyes. But I'm very surprised that in Rothman's corner, they're not doing anything about it. Giving ground more this round. Sebastian. Good jab. Oh, good weapon. And again, a low blow. This is going to cost him. Take a point away from him. And honestly, I don't believe O'Neill Bell can afford to lose a point. Now he's going to have to go out and win the round just to even the round. Boy, oh, that is costly. Oh, that's costly. Wow. You know, and Tommy Kibbins is right. We've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen him hit several. He got some on the house. Yeah, I did. He's got to feel a sense of urgency now because he has to win this round. Both of them trying uppercuts. When your opponent uses an uppercut on you, you can come back with an uppercut yourself. Some of the tape coming loose there. Sweating a lot. Good combination downstairs. I'm trying to shoot There's another low blow. himself in danger of being DQ. Oh, and a double left wow. hand wow. from Rothman. I don't know what that was all about. Bell just did nothing about it. Well, you know, when you get in the habit of pulling back, like I said, I hated fighters doing, you lean back like that, sometimes you forget to lean back. You still get hit. <laughs> or sometimes that punch keeps coming. Wow, like that. Hand, good left hand, and Bell covers up. And three more low blows. Well, the bottom line is, I think Rothman did enough to win this round. And as a result of that, it's going to be a 10-8 round. Wow, David. Do it. How do you 
say to your fighter, look, they're going to disqualify you. Keep hitting low. It's very simple. It's either do or die. You go all the way again, you got to lose the fight. And, uh, you know, Sean, now it's a very, very important situation like this when you're tired. It's very, very important to be a disciplined fighter. You know, you got to you gotta have in the back of your mind to be a disciplined fighter, making sure that you don't want to cost yourself fishing as a champion. You don't want to lose the title like that. That's right, discipline. There it is. I'll tell you, on my card, I have it a seven-point difference on my card, which would mean that Bell would have to knock him out to win the fight now. That said, you and I have seen some very bizarre decisions. And so don't etch that in stone by any stretch of the imagination. First round is very close. I thought it could go either way. And maybe even the second round. But then after that, Rockland, 10-8 round because of the knockdown in the fourth, and a 10-8 round in that round because of the point being deducted from O'Neill Bell. Well, too, if you're in the corner of, of O'Neill, you say to him, you know, I want you to forget about the body. Just throw head shots. Forget about the body because every time you go to the body, you go too far to the south. So just, just concentrate on head shots. For a couple of rounds at least. Right now, you know, you know everybody's watching for that. You know, the other thing, too, and I, I pose this as a question actually both to you and to David Tua. When they do get in close quarters, watch where the elbows of Rothman are. They're right down around the band of his shorts. And I don't know. I mean, maybe you just aim below the elbows, and there you are, low blow. That's what they're doing. That's what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. What O'Neill is trying to do is go around. Are you, are you on a grinch with me, uh, David? He's trying to go around the elbows, and he just goes low. Well, that's the thing, you know, the great Rocky Marciano. You know, he didn't have to hit the body. He had to hit the forearms, the shoulders, you know. You don't have to go to the body. You know, the arms are obviously right there in front of him. He broke all the capillaries in his opponent's arms just by hitting him, and hitting him in the arm. George Foreman did a little bit of that too, didn't he? Oh, oh. yes. But he puts him back in with that burger machine that he has now. Yeah, that's right. Uppercuts. Story of this round, Rothman. Bell did some good work in close quarters in this one. You can hear those body punches. Rock is looking for the uppercut himself. What a pace, too. These are light heavy uh, cruiser lights. And they have been extremely busy. In fact, so much so, the mouthpiece just came out from Bell. Yeah. Once again, also got a problem with the tape on his glove. You mentioned it earlier. Tommy Kivens incurring the wrath of this crowd. And, and some of that, as yes, we said, started a little bit earlier in a fight that was not on television. Tommy Kivens uh, gave a fighter an extra minute's rest because he said he's, he's hurt. Give him another minute. Now, maybe there's another set of rules that I don't know anything about, but I've never seen it before. Jabs. I can hear it from the corner of O'Neill Bell. Oh, the jab, too. You can steer your opponent with him. Push him into your shots. See it there? That right hand was picked on the glove. All of those on the glove. You know, it's just basic boxing. You hit and not be hit. You know, keep your hands out, pay attention to basics. It's just it's what they teach you when you're and having her kids fighting. And, and you have to hope that the judges see it the same way and don't just see the flurry of activity. Oh, they, oh Bell raises his arms going oh, back to his corner. And the crowd loves him. Yeah, they love him. <laughs> David Dua, he's, he needs to do something to, to rejuvenate himself. And Rothman with that, with that uh, face of little water on his eyes anyway. He seems to be doing a good job getting away from the body and trying to capitalize. Even though uh, Sebastian has his gloves on, he's doing the best he can. Staying him up. Well, the uh, uppercuts are a vicious weapon for any fighter. And Sebastian Hoffman in that eighth round using those uppercuts extremely well. Look at that, right to the point of the chin. You know, the uppercut is such a dangerous weapon. 
try to hit your opponent under the nose or right under the chin like that shot right there. Hit him in the Adam's apple or in the solar plexus, right in the xiphoid process. I mean, there's so many, so many places you can hit him and hurt him. A process of that. The xiphoid process. I remember that. There's a plexus. Yeah. Plexus right there, all of your, uh, all of your, when you get hit there, it feels like everything just leaves your body. Oh, it is extremely painful. And also, straight start speak, speaking in tongues. Fishing around, trying to find the openings downstairs is a dangerous thing for O'Neill to do. O'Neill Bell's corner desperately telling him. Let your hands go. And there's the jab from Rothman, which has been a great weapon all night. That and the uppercut for him. There's two more uppercuts. Listen to those punches. Bell still trying to stay with the body. Overhand right from Bell, and there he slipped the left hand through it. Hitting the arms. I mean, I think Rothman, at the very least, is you know, holding, his, holding his own with Bell in close quarters, which you would think would be O'Neal Bell's forte. That's what he wants to do. Sure is, I'm but I'm telling you right here. They, 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 this is, Tommy's got to do something cost him another here. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it really is. It's, it's getting to the point where it's, where it's kind of too much. Yeah. It's way too much. He's just, it's, it's, he's frustrated at the protection that, that Rothman is doing. One more and this fight is over. That, I, I think Tommy, I know Tommy Kinnon means it. Yeah, no, he will do it. He will pull the trigger, although I think Rothman's winning the fight anyway. Uppercut yeah. from Rothman. And there's an uppercut from Bell. Good right oh. hand from Bell. Bell's better when you win him a few times. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Bell has to win this round just to have the round. Uh, and I'm not sure that he is. Well, Bell was winning like the last 20 seconds until Rothman put pressure on him. But here's Bell again. Rothman covering up. It's a very close round. And it'll be interesting to see how the judges see that. Very close round. How'd you see that round? Well, okay, that's very, very close, but I always say I have to give up this passion, you know? Okay, yeah, work on it. Keep working on that. Chest and head. Chest and head. Maybe it looks like he's getting tired. If he got his hand here. Dangerously close to being disqualified. James Plenty giving him instructions. Hit that chest and throw the right hand when you're inside. You know, throw the right hand over the top. You got three to go. Keep them up. I don't want to take another corner of this walk. Keep them up. Not just one, but four low blows. Three. Look at this. Three different rallies for low blows, and Tommy Kimmon said, no, 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 that's going to cost you two. You know, you the know? fact is, I, you really hope that Tommy Kimmons does not DQ right. O'Neill Bell because it will take away from what Sebastian Rothman has done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody wants to win or lose by disqualification. This is round 10. We're going 12 for the IBF Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And the visitor from South Africa, I think, has given the champion O'Neill Bell all he wants. Oh, yes. And he has been a difficult opponent for O'Neill Bell. He's been strong. He's been tough. He's been durable. He's given O'Neill all kinds of trouble. O'Neill can't figure out how to break through the defense. Only knockdown in the fight as uh, 
been Rothman who dropped Bell. That was in the fourth round. There's a right hand from Bell at long range. Oh. Rothman trying to keep that jab in the face of Bell. And look at this pressure from Rothman, too. On top of Bell. This is right where he knocked him down in a similar situation. Good right hand again behind the jab. Bell's punches being caught in the gloves of Rothman as they have been all night. Well, the best defense. And Sebastian is using that. Rothman on the inside throwing punches. to the body goes Sebastian. Bell coming back. There was that uppercut. Get a blood from the nose now of Rothman. Uppercut slips in again. Rothman having a good round here. Is Bell hurt? Leaning up against those ropes like that. What fighters do is they lay on those ropes and it it doesn't use as much energy. Lay on those ropes and they just hit their try to hit their opponents and bounce off those ropes, trying to get a little more power in their punches, using the spring of the ropes behind it. And I think you know what Rothman's been doing that I really like when they are in close quarters and they're banging on each other in close quarters. Rothman will take a step back through the jab and then come with the right hand. To get more distance, 90% of the power of the punch is right on the end, that final snap. I think Bell's starting to get worn down a little bit here. But we may have seen our first round where O'Neill Bell did not land a low blow. Now that's true. That's he is thing. trying to concentrate. But I think he lost the round. <laughs> Interesting how the crowd was really backing Bell when the fighters were introduced, and now they're all in the corner of Sebastian Rothman. Front runners, huh? Why do you think that is, David? It's got to be heard, especially, you know, the, obviously the fans have come out to watch, you know, and, and not see, you know, a fighter, you know, hitting the other guy low, 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 low. So I guess that's obviously the response by the fans, you know, especially with the, the O'Neill trying to do with Chase Pierre, and obviously the last round, he's done a great job. Look at that ball. Kick There are some trainers too who believe, who believe or have this feeling that you can't reverse once you have the swelling. I, I, I feel like you can, but they feel like you can't affect it. Tommy Kevins again uh, taking a long look and pointing at O'Neill Bell as if to say, please don't do that. I don't want to stop this fight. I don't want him to either. I think they should. It would have to really be blatant, in my opinion to take it away from Rothman here, even though he win the fight with a DQ. But... Well, he doesn't want that. No, he certainly doesn't. not. No, he's earned this fight, in my opinion. Of course. Let's go. Now, the old saying in boxing is, a challenger must take it away from the champion. He's got to go in there and you know, knock him down and hurt him and impose his will on him. I think Sebastian Rodman has been doing that. I think it's a very lopsided fight. Yes. But again, I hasten to say I've seen some very odd decisions, especially here in Florida. Good right hand from O'Neal. That's an uppercut from Rodman. It is Rothman who is out hustling him. Good 
shot yeah. that hurt Rothman and drops him. And down goes Rothman, and I'm not sure he's going to make it. Just like that, it's over. Wow. In one second. Look at that. Way ahead on our scorecards. Way ahead. I had a 97-90 going into this round. There was only one way that O'Neill Bell could even fathom winning this fight. He found it, didn't he? That was it. Wow. Out of nowhere. They had been pleading with O'Neill wow. for the last several rounds. The overhand right they wanted. When they asked for the uppercuts, he gave him that. There he is looking over. Sebastian, you know, he, he, as a fighter, you want to make sure your opponent's okay. Well, they will, they will good sportsmanship. We should tell you too that they will err on the side of precaution here. Oh, yeah. They're keeping and they're dropping down, giving a little oxygen here. sit up until they're absolutely certain that no. he's okay. And the first thing every fighter wants to do is they want to stand up quickly. When they stand up, they go right back down again. Keep that man on the ground a while. Put some ice on the back of his neck. Let him breathe. Try to talk to him. Get him talking. O'Neal Bell, wow, out of nowhere. We thought it was over for him as a champion. We thought maybe even his career kind of going flat round by round in this fight, painting himself into a, into a box. But he pulled himself out, and they are thankful. And the work continues uh, as O'Neill Bell and his uh, crew kneel in prayer, and now they will get Sebastian Rothman up. Rothman, uh, we're going to try to get the judges' cards for you, but in my opinion, Rothman was lopsidedly in front in this fight. Oh, yes. And uh, it looked like he was on his way to being the new champion. O'Neill Bell had only one, one thing he could do in this fight, go for the KO. And he did. Boy, what a heartbreak for this young man. Coming all the way from South Africa. But how exciting for him, yeah. O'Neill Bell. All due credit to O'Neill Bell. I mean, he reached down and he found something in David. Uh, you know, I, in your sport, they're always talking about the heart of a champion, and he certainly showed that. Well, most definitely, a lot of credit and respect to O'Neill. He fought a good fight. Things were going well his way, but he stuck in there. He hung in there. Hey, he had ended up with a knockout. So, hey, credit to him. Sebastian did a great job as well. Let's take another look at it. Here it is, guys. Out of nowhere, and it looked like Rothman was on his way, and then a couple of body shots backs him up to the ropes. And then look at this shot from O'Neill Bell. Downstairs, O'Neal, Neil, we're looking for the, the overhand right. Then there it is, right there. The overhand right, he pronated the blow right on the end. 90% of the power of the punch is on the snap at the end. And back against the ropes. And it kind Bell. of bounced off the ropes right yeah. into that shot. And a little bit more, the bounce of the ropes kind of added to the punch from O'Neal Bell. Going back to the corner, he'll push off and then go back to the corner again they'll swing him around and then crack him here he comes off the ropes and boom right into that straight right hand boy it, it, you knew it immediately too when he went down it was over right he was i think he was out before he hit the canvas oh yeah i think we'll get a look at it here you can see he just kind of oh, right there he wobbled a little apart. bit from that shot and then the second shot was really the one that put him over Wow, how exciting for O'Neal Bell. Wow, it looked like he was on his way to losing that belt, but he's got it. Well, here, now here's the story. This, how many times have we seen this? We, all three of us here, I think, have been saying that this is a lopsided fight for Rothman. I've got the judges' cards here. Two of the judges had this fight even going into this round. 
And one of the judges had Rothman in front by two points. So the fight was still very much up for grabs on all the judges' cards. And that goes to show you, I suppose, uh, why I'm not a judge. Let's go to the ring, make, make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Here's Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, nine seconds in round number 11. The winner by way of knockout, he is still the IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World, O'Neill Supernova Bell. Well, there is your winner in the 11th round, and uh, I guess it just goes to show you what I know about boxing, huh? <laughs>